Ready, ho. One. This is Guy Seehe, and you're listening to the Retro Unlearned Network. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and don't adjust your sets, of course, because this is the Untitled Movie Show. Today is May 14th, 2015, here in the United Kingdom. I believe it's May 13th, still in the United States, at 12.34 a.m. in the morning here. And also, if you're five hours behind, I believe it's 8.35 now here, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we are doing a, a very good show today. We're going to be talking about the most. Really I- like fish. We're going to be do- talking about the most iconic roles uh, for several actors. Basically, the roles that they've made their own, and also those roles that kind of typecast them a little bit. So it's going to be a good show, of course, and it won't be a good show without the amazing, the talented, the ubervescent, and also the. Probably not enough words in the dictionary to describe her. She's Anita Kasky. Uh, thank you. Can, thank can, you. Can, can we just say one thing for her? Which is, Miguel, we miss you. Shh. That name should not be muttered. Schnell. So, yeah. What is Ubervescent? I don't think I've ever heard the word Ubervescent. Ubervescent. You're Vescent, but you're Uber. It's a cell phone plan. It's, it, it's the, only, the only word to describe me. Uber. Of course. Uh, if you, I'm trying to get it popular enough so it goes in mm. the in the dictionary. Hopefully the urban dictionary. So be like, yeah. Ubervescent. <laughs> we have to stop Uber stealing it. I, I agree. And uh, also speaking of Uber, we have the gentleman who usually does gaming podcasts with us here, uh, including I Got Gameplay. And I think he has been on an episode of Burhand the Boy. But this week he's talking movies. He is Mr. Sean Michelin. Sean! Hi. Hi, hello, everybody. A little change of pace, but I'm here. Sound like a computer there. Uh, also. Are you, are you smoking a doobie? I think he's smoking a doobie. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm all out of doobie, but I'm having a Molson Canadian. Good man. Good man. I like the sailboat mm, on the tasty. front. And I like big butts, but I cannot lie. Uh, speaking of big butts, of course, we have the awesome, the gentleman who's got a bod like Bruce Lee, because he's been showing it to me half the podcast. Here's Mr. Dave Wade! You wish you had a fucking Bruce Lee body like me. Yeah, bitch! Shizzle! Living in America! Gonna get bookadoo! Bookadoo! So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about iconic roles that have made the actors, of course, as well. Um, so I want to basically put it over to the panel to get started on tonight's show. And yes, we want to say a great big hello to Miguel Leon, who's not here with us today. Uh, reason being, he's decided to take a little bit of a break. He's going out there into the wild world, How hoping... Dare he visit his parents? Well, I, I think he's hoping to catch Pokemon. I don't think he's visiting his parents this week, but you know... Um, I'm hoping he comes back with Charizard. If he doesn't, then I'm going to ask why. Now, um, speaking of Charizards, for some weird reason, uh, I let's go on, Dave. Go on, Dave. Mike Myers, Austin Powers. Hmm. So tell us a little bit about why you think Mike Myers made the iconic role of Austin Powers. Because no people are cool in Britain, apart from Bond and the Queen. Well, there's pairs of Brits as well, so I disagree with that statement. Hey, Anina, Shut give up, us... Anina. You're a slave. Dave, that's, that's not a counter-argument. Uh, Anina, tell us why you, you disagree with that statement. I Can I finish my statement? statement? Can you, you just ask me to read my up? statement? Dave, Dave, one second. Let her just say what she, what she needs to exactly, say. Exactly, for Christ's sake. I disagree with the statement no one in Britain is called. Cool. That was the statement I disagree with. Oh, okay. Brilliant. And one more. Sorry, well, we do have David Beckham, and everyone loves David Beckham for some reason. I like David cool, Beckham. cool, though. I wouldn't call David Beckham cool. No, he, he defines the term... I think, would be the term. I think he redefines the term pussy whipped. I would term him fantastic face. 
face until he starts talking. Do you know what I mean? I, I have to admit. Cool. And then you speak and you go, and the magic is gone. Yeah, I, I remember once, like, uh, all You're the ladies were... I, I was sitting there in the Why living room, listening to him to talk, listening to him, like, getting ready to talk. And, and like the ladies were with me. I, I was dating a girl at the time. She was like, oh, David Beckham's so handsome. I can't wait for him to talk. As soon as he opened his mouth, as soon as he opened his mouth, he basically just went, yes, yeah, so we're going to do... Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to go and beat him. And I think the team really, really understands how the team plan... And I was just like... Uh, yep, yeah, that makes me. I, I, I give you the Beckham squeaky voice, but I will not allow you to talk football. No, that was that was about the extent of football that I could go. But yeah, so Dave, uh, finish your statement on Mike Myers being defined by Austin Powers. Why did the role, do you think, make his career? <clears throat> because he was so good at it. He was absolutely amazing. He was just he he just lavished love upon people if you don't like mike myers as austin powers you're dead to me <laughs> mm, i the thing is though i can give a counter argument that he's not actually best known for austin powers he's yeah, best known shrek. yeah shrek or wayne. that's what i was gonna say wayne in wayne's world because Everybody can do a Bohemian Rhapsody. Who knows the entire lyrics to Bohemian Rhapsody thanks to Wayne's World? Yeah, good point. Right. Shut up. I, I actually know from um, from my tasteful musical upbringing, my mother. <laughs> which is why I, I always sympathize with Peter Quill. Yeah. I like that. I, I actually know it because I listen to the record. Yeah, same here. Same here. But, but you know. it brought back my love for it watching that movie. Yeah, and also, who here can basically quote... Wayne's World. Oh, I Jesus can. Christ, one and two. I'm just saying, at the, the end of the day, yeah, even sweet. though it hasn't it's had... <laughs> well, even though it hasn't had as many sequels as Austin Powers, because Austin Powers actually ranges at three sequels, can, uh, can three I, movies. Can I finish my statement? Go on then, Mr. Wade. Austin Powers is great, and I will tell you why. If you don't like this scene, you're dead inside. The bit when he does three point turn in the mini car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is great. Dude. Oh. And also when he looked at Kristen Slater, and I find myself saying this to many, many people in you know twenty four hour petrol stations, which is Sherbert. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, you uh, uh, I like the one of that bastard in the wire scene. Oh, look at this. One of my wires broke. Yes, I don't remember eating any corn. <laughs> Let me uh, tell you something. Really... I want to eat your baby. Ooh, risky, are we? I'm <laughs> sexy and you're crap. <laughs> no, the, 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 the greatest scene, which is everything appears to be in order. <laughs> the subtitle scene. one was nice, too. Why don't we make some cookies okay. sticks and stick them in the floor, and then when the person comes in, they fall over and they die. So we've, or we've you could just show them your jubblies. With Mike Myers, though, <laughs> do you think his comedy roles, to begin with, like Wayne's World, kind of got him there, and quick, then quick, 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 random fact: Mike Myers um, grew up in England, and um, he grew up in Liverpool. And when you see Wayne Wayne's World. That picture of the Liverpool football team in the background was his actual football team picture that his dad gave him. Just yep. saying. And when his dad died, Mike Myers came back to England and scattered his ashes on Anfield. So, I yeah. wonder if that, that had anything to do with his role in Inglourious Bastards. Oh, don't talk about that. I'm just saying, in terms of Mike Myers, it, it seems like there is kind of a pattern. So you've got Wayne's World, you had Wayne's World 2. But then... it was iconic, is, um, you know, Austin Powers. That's, that, that's the point I'm saying. I still think Wayne's yeah. World. Yeah. Wayne's yeah, World from... I'd say Shrek. Shrek kind of revitalized no, his Powers. career. Okay, and Enoch, no, go, for, go for the Shrek yeah, argument. Randy bloke with bad teeth. No, that's me. Uh, and Enoch. 
Austin Powers and everything, for years we didn't hear anything about Mike Myers. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. And then he did Shrek. And now he has... Okay, you don't see him. But everyone knows it's Mike Myers. And I think he went with Shrek. He actually is not that comedic. He... He, it's more towards say, straight acting. He's not that good, and I was about to hang up. No, he's like, no. he's he like another very. Straight. He goes more subtle, and he... I think that actually shows his acting ability. Well, okay. yeah, he's playing mm, a bit more of a straight of. man than that. Role. Yeah, and I, I, I enjoyed that. I mean, he's great with the characters. Yeah, like him but... and Donkey are like Abbott and Costello in a lot of ways, right? Mm. Donkey is 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 the loud, and he's more the straight man who gets infuriated yeah. at the, at the antics of Donkey. Mm, Actually, for that... my now... Yo, man, I can't believe you let it go. I can't get the smell out of my teeth. <laughs> Sorry. I shut up now. So... Oh, yeah, I just think it's nice to see. He was obviously, you know, typecast as the crazy character bloke. And then Trick came along. Okay, it's a character. But it's the most normal character, personality-wise, I think I've That's ever seen him point. play. What about um, the, and, and I know that probably Dave would know this one because he's, we and him are roughly like the same kind of age gap. Um, what about I married an axe murderer, Dave? You've fallen into oh the axe Oh my god. Gap. I married. That was that That was, uh, was it Andy McDowell who was in that one? Uh, no, um, uh, no, uh, no. Bonnie Travis. That was it. That's Bonnie great, Travis though. and, um, Anthony LaPaglia, actually one of his earlier roles, he was uh, his uh, cop buddy, and um, Alan Arkin played his chief, and his chief wanted to be the uh, the more intense cop. He was trying to make him the more intense cop chief, like in the movies, but he was Mr. Laid Back and calm and everything like that, and coaching him on being the intense chief. I, I like that little bit in the movie. I did, actually. I like Alan Arkin, though. So for... Okay, so I, this... I, I have something very important to say, by the way. Okay, Dave. My hair is great. Okay. Um, so basically, in terms of iconic roles, and let's take a vote in terms of the the role that made Mike Myers because he's got he's got so many good stuff. Um, His so no life stuff was absolutely brilliant. So shall um, we say? I, I'm saying Wayne's World. Nina. No Shrek. Sean. Uh, is a dead tie between Powers and Wayne, really for me. But um, because I'm Canadian and because he uses the Wayne's World character as a bit more of a Canadian oh, stereotype, Wayne. Yeah. I mean, look, fucking Stan Mikita's donuts. Tim Horton was a hockey player. That's the whole homage, and so was Stan Mikita. It's Tim Horton's soup Mikita's. is amazing, by the way. Oh, I used to work at Tim Horton's, man. I used to eat it all the time. Dave? I would say Wayne's World, and um, I would like to say this. Part time, excellent. Just slept on my job, please, mate. <laughs> okay, so uh, Anina, pick an actor. Jack Nicholson. What role? Ooh, that's no, that's a good role. What one was that? The Shining. Oh, no, just... Well, obviously, Johnny. Ah, oh, The Shining. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I. I have to agree with you on that one because that's kind of that was his breakthrough role, Joe, wasn't it? What really annoys me about that movie is there's a director's cut that was only shown on US TV once. There's a director's cut that is 35 minutes longer. Oh, I want to see that. And um, when someone told me about it, my my winky went hard, and like mahogany. There's a director's cut of The Shining that's 35 minutes longer. I need to fucking see this. Mm. And it's, um, apparently all the extra scenes, um, are the shit outside, um, the house when he... Sorry, people. Spoilers! The, the, the hedges and everything. Yeah. You know what, people? If you haven't seen The Shining, go fuck yourself. I know, there was a mini-series about The Shining as well, do you know? Yeah. Had, oh, which was not that good. Me. But, yeah, people had ample chance. I think everyone knows what happens in Shining, even if they've not seen it. I wanted to, you know, um, and it's before we had, um, you know, digital cameras, but I, 
I once wanted to try and talk my brother into pretending to freeze me so he could take a picture on his then Polaroid camera. You know, with like the, a Polaroid picture. Yeah, with the stupid grin, sat against the hedge, going, I'm Jack Nicholson, bitches. <laughs> I like no. about the Joker, though, I gotta say. Yeah, I, have, I, 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 I have one question, though, to the, um, the crowd. Which mm. is... The panel. Crowd, man. Panel. <laughs> crowd. <laughs> panel. You're so argumentative today, Dave. Behave. You Dave say panel, panel, I say crowd. Panel, crowd. It's day off season, so shut up, crowd. <laughs> God. He's mad because the Habs lost. Oh, you fucking win. You and Sir Patrick are both. Yes, we and went myself out as last well. night. I, I'm fully aware that the Canadians went out, you prick. <laughs> uh, fucking, but you know what? Oh, Gary my Price God, I snorted. Me. No, um, my, my thing about um, The Shining, which is I think is the most endearing uh, depiction of, of it, is... Jack Nicholson frozen at the end. Genius. He, he almost makes me want to be frozen. Wait, did Jack Nicholson sing Frozen? Is that what you're saying? I wish he bloody Wanna build snowman? Yeah, me too. Wanna build a snowman? <laughs> actually, I seen one in my feed there today where somebody actually photoshopped that scene where he chops out the door and they put the, the white wig on him. And uh, she and Shelley Duvall's character actually has the orange wig. Want to build a snowman? We don't have to build a snowman. You know what I mean. Okay, so we're we're going with the Shining. Uh, Sean, are you in agreement with this one? The Shining. Yeah, the Shining oh, was so, so, so very Sean, much. Dave, Dave. The thing I wanted to say was the really kind of... Can says shush. Ending, Let Sean talk. Him in the picture at the end. David, let Sean talk. <laughs> yeah, I'm being stern. Let Sean talk. Stop talking over everyone. Sean. Uh, all I was going to say was, yeah, it, I do agree the shining. I mean, it wasn't just a breakthrough role for him. It really, really put him on his crazy jack. It, it To me, like, you know, like, you got him as a joker. You got him even in uh, As Good As It Gets when he did that with Bonnie Hunt where he was uh, also that crazy. That movie makes my balls in. Hey, I like and some the of Departed. those lines that he gave. Oh, yeah, The, the Departed. Even, he's uh, still being the same crazy, scary guy. Uh, but there was one more role, though, I was thinking of that, that pretty much was the same thing. And I, I, it bloody well doesn't one come to mind. One of you the cuckoo's nest. Postman. Yes, thank you. Crazy Jack right there, too. Mm-hmm. I'll play the Indian on the remake. I have the mind make of the movie. Sorry. I'm sorry, I don't think there's any other film that that is more Jack Nicholson than, than The Shining. When he thinks Jack Nicholson, <coughs> you much, think Jack. Yeah. Straight away. Unless he pulls John Malkovich and does like that being John Malkovich kind of thing where it's being Jack Nicholson. That would be pretty entertaining, I think. I would watch and, that. And one thing though that comes to mind though, I gotta add about I'm Jack so is when he's at a Lakers game and he's got me. sunglasses on, and it makes me think of uh, what's his name from uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm. What he said is like, two kinds of people wear sunglasses indoors: blind people and assholes. And well, <laughs> Jack, I was wearing sunglasses at a Lakers that game. Movie for you in a um, sentence. Hi, I'm John Malkovich. Who wants to make a movie right the inside of my head? Yeah. That's a really good film, though. Being, being John Malkovich, you do not besmirch the name of being John Malkovich, Dave Wade. It's a you really good film. Let me finish, you pricks. Such but a great movie. You started it. Yeah. Just just say, like. Let's make a movie about the inside of my head. And if none of you dumb bastards out there in YouTube land get it, I couldn't care because this is the greatest movie in the world. Thank you. You're welcome. It was a great movie. <sighs> Everyone's gone silent. Well, okay. Sorry, and also, I actually did this, by the way. I, I, by the way, allegedly, I did this. So please don't arrest me. But I actually 
threw an empty Coke can in someone's head <laughs> when I was driving by in a car. Allegedly and actually in the same sentence is incriminating, Dave. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Um, there you go. In a world far, far, far away where He-Man rules in a world. Turn, I threw an empty Coke can at someone's head and said, and it hit them. Which made it that much more poignant. Heads up, Malkovich. <laughs> okay, um, here's an, here's one for you guys. Christopher Reeves, Superman. Oh yes. Yeah, oh my God, four movies for fuck's sake. And yeah. some of them really the only, bad. The only good Superman to me, he's Superman. That's it. Even no the Quest else. for Peace. The Quest for Peace is kind of yeah. Uh, that one was, uh, yeah, because of the fact that that wasn't, it, it was distributed by Warner Brothers, but it was done by another company there, Canon, I think it was. And it was yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, it's been odd. If you read the comic adaptation, it actually made more sense. Um, I have it actually there in my pile of comics, but um, yeah, I mean, like the whole fucking Gene Wilder not only being fucking, not Gene Wilder, best, Jesus, listen to me now. In the world. Yeah, but uh, he also voices Nuclear Man. And the no. guy looks like Shadow Steve, and he looks like a nuclear man. Looks like Shadow Stevens from fucking Hollywood Squares. Yeah, I, I never understood <laughs> like how like they used Superman's Super hair, Super threw it into the sun. Kill Superman. Yeah, he just he, does too. he comes looks out of like the sun and he just looks really. He looks like a ginger Superman. I don't know what was going on there. Made from Superman's DNA. And and he was wearing spandex for God's sake. What did that was that part of his DNA? And get this though, he's nuclear, but he's solar powered. Where did they get the costume? I don't get that. Nuclear man just popped up one day. Bob Mackie. Tighty whitey suit. What's up for that bitch scratching? You know, like he scratched him, and Superman was like, oh. Don't make me laugh though when he blows up the Great War of China. And uh, just by pointing at it with his hand, and uh, you know, as a Superman shrew with his rat, as I am, like you can't, you can't. And then Superman flies back and reassembles the Great Wall of China with his other hand. Like what the fuck? I mean, I love you, Superman, but that theoretically impossible to act. Elephant in the room, Dave. Oh, hang on. Okay, Anina, tell us uh, what, what was your favourite one of the Superman movies, and why is this role kind of iconic in terms oh, of Chris Favourite one? It's been ages since I've seen the uh, classic Superman movies, so it's hard to say. But, I mean. Dave, Elephant in the room, mate. I'm trying to turn off, shall we, Slack? I mean, he's just, he just has the way he holds himself, the most perfect jawline ever to be ever made. Sorry, not you. He's confident yet not arrogant. It just works. And I think every other actor they've cast since, they've been trying to replicate that. I mean, even Henry Cavill looks a bit like Christopher Reeve, slightly. And also, Christopher Reeves manages actually to know the difference yeah, yeah, no, between. No, no. He actually also knows the difference between Clark Kent and Superman, which yes, most actors does. don't tend he to does do. Actually, play that yes. difference very Good well. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Very different. I uh, need a little note there. You you know the scene in Man of Steel where he's in the bar and there's the girl singing. Yeah. She's from here. I actually have a, a vinyl record of her new album. She well, she lives here in my mm -hmm. city. Oh, um, right. And I have uh, her album. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, she was actually at the red carpet and everything as well. Oh, that's cool. So, Dave... I thought yeah. Man of Steel was a horrific movie, but... Me I too. I agree with you. I don't think anybody yeah. who's actually a patron of the arts... Zack Snyder can blow me. Yeah, it was... It, he's like a poor man's J.J. Abrams. I'm the bloke who cares about the entire planet. Apart from the fight scene, when I will fly through buildings and kill yeah, everyone. And you kill everyone, literally. It's like, I'm going to save this small family, but everyone else must die. Yeah. Plus, Raccoon really, really, really annoyed me. 
No, I agree with you that Sean Walker McLean did. Um, so the bit that really annoyed me that movie was um, when Zod just goes. Um, he he after Clark explains to him, which is you need to focus and make the rest of the world, you know, slide away. And it took Clark fucking twenty years, but no, Zod comes along. And he just goes, "I'm looking at my hand." Now I'm like you. It's like, fuck off. You fucking asshole. That's not how it works. That's true. I uh, liked him as Zod, though. I liked that actor, and oh, I've seen him in another oh, one called Last I Man Comic, where he played so a hitman. Let's play the role rather big like this. We so will it, fight it, him. How not to act like a villain? Ooh, in case you remember I'm evil. Uh, in case you forgot I'm evil. And I have these evil eyes. Oh, for a Zack Snyder villain, he was great. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I shall wiggle my evil deep, eyebrows so no one forgets I'm evil. Oh, go away, honestly. Can I be Can a trap? I'm still going to say, though, the original Zod was great. Yeah. Original great. Zod. The new Zod. You just threw something transparent oh, upon your chest. Heal before Zod. And it completely inconvenienced me. What the fuck is that with this fucking transparent chest? Plastic. He threw it at them and they're like, oh, that's kind of an inconvenience. Hmm. Stopped us for like two seconds. They yeah, they did. Yeah. Now I'm going to kick you in the hole that you never get up from. So, going on from that one, let's go um, to you, Mr. Sean Michelin. What character? What actor? What character? Uh, for, for Reeves or just actor? Any actor. Um, but make sure you say oh my god, I gotta go with it because both Canadian and the fact that everybody's gonna agree, William fucking Shatner. Oh yeah. And what character? Captain James Siberius Kirk. Do you know what? Um, I want to say about this guy. Everyone wants to basically they they say that we need to do a game called Shatner, and you can play it at home, folks. And every time someone yells Shatner, you gotta look like. You, you got to, like, hit your back to the wall and look really surprised. True story, by the way. I... True story. Um, when I was at um, secondary school, uh, every time someone had a bad hair day, we would walk up to them and just go like, <laughs> Shatner's bassoon got you. See, the version I heard of the Shatner game was whenever anybody yells out Shatner, you have to... Uh, overact, overact everything. Mm -hmm. Overact everything. Ooh, now, now, now that's better. Really yeah, that's oh my part god. Of it. You just Spawn. 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 This is this you turning into the. Like you have asthma. This is sounding like the untitled movie show of bad Shatner impressions. <laughs> <laughs> Shatner thing. impressions and fighting. That should be our Everyone episode Shatner title. Impressions. I don't Shatner impressions, know. fighting, and Dave's drunken rants. Yeah. <laughs> you slag. Piss off, you slag. So, okay. Um, so, Shatner and James Tiberius Kirk. Do you have anything to elaborate on that, Mr. Lawn Boy? Yes, I have to speak overly dramatic and say. Make it so. Actually, no, I can't say that, can I? Because that's, that's Patrick wrong. Stewart. That's Sir Patrick. Yeah. Oh. Bollocks. And he's done a few different things. But again... Oh, oh, mistake right there. So, oh, and, mistake. and Eno, uh, what about you? you anything to elaborate on the, the Shatner? Uh, well, William Shatner is William Shatner. That's all you can say. Shatner's bassoon. No, I think Rose obviously Louisiana? his his most well known part, which he overacted brilliantly. James Tiberius Kirk, and, and also the fact that he got to have sex with loads of blue women, I'm kind of jealous. What what um I I I I I can't remember, but what was the um epic speech from Star Trek Two? Over the oh, uh, the, the eulogy? Yeah. Do it. 
Do it. Do it. Do it now. I'm trying to think of it now. It's like it, he was pretty much saying, of all the souls I've encountered, his was the most human. And you hear him choke up right at the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, and then, you know, they shoot him out, and Scotty's there playing Amazing Grace between parts. Where's my bagpipes? I put it on... <laughs> I put it on Facebook when I did the um, stupid little hand signal. Uh, you know, when you separate your fingers. And I said, do it for um, Nimoy. And uh, I got 115 hits. So, I guess he was loved. But saying that, Leonard Nimoy, you know, George Takai, all these... Oh, my. <laughs> um, That's the best bit, and still he does it brilliantly in Family Guy. When he gets to the end, he goes, For the souls I encounter my travel, his was the most... Kill him! <laughs> Sounds like he's taking a shit. Um, so yeah, going on from there, let's go to, um, let, I'm, I'm going to kind of bring it around around Robin here. Here's one of, of my choice on this one. Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, you yeah. 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 Dave. Commando, 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 commando. Why? Oh so many great lines in that oh movie. That's a Terminator. Oh, he's doing a fucking another Terminator movie this year for fuck's sakes. Yeah. Uh, that, why he looks old. Yeah. that movie, that movie annoys me, and I can explain to you the one, the reason behind that is they've taken spoilers for those who haven't seen the trailer. They've taken the one person who's supposed to be the leader of the resistance, the one that's supposed to turn the tide against Skynet, and they've turned yeah, him evil. Turned him into a fucking cyborg. John so Connor, ladies spoilers. and gents. Yeah, you. Fucking... Well, it's not a spoiler if it's in the trailer. Yeah, it's, yeah. In, it's in the trailer too. I, I remember they were talking about it and I was like, what? Shut up, Linnea. It's spoiling. Uh, Dave, that was kind of delayed You're there. Unbearable today, Dave. Unbearable. He's, he's unbearable. So he needs to get some pitney baskets. I'll, 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 I'll shut up and I'll sit in the corner. <laughs> hey, boy! <laughs> So, um, Bears also a term for chubby homosexual. It's bad, though, isn't it? It's bad. It's, it's, oh. I'm gonna raise you, I'm gonna see you, uh, your Terminator, and I'm gonna raise you Predator. Oh my god. If it bleeds, we can kill it. And so many iconic lines, such as, Get to the chopper now! But they nick, they, they, they nick that line. If it bleeds, um, for the new Batman movie. Yeah. No, because he goes, do you bleed? Bleed. <clears throat> I'm bad. Actually, Rob Coleman said that one first in, um, in I think it's Blade Two. Uh, and as also, my said my daddy for a, no, as my daddy said thing my, about Blade no. Two is when he pops the grenade on Blood's head. I want you to see oh, this yeah. moment, and I want you to remember this moment. And remember that you are just like every one of us. And also remember that I beat you. No, you remember you remember the man who beat you. Such a great moment. Clark. Uh, still the best quote is, I'll be back. Come again, on. again. Uh, very iconic on that one as well. So you could say running man. Do it, Burn. I'll be back. <laughs> you read uh, the book? Versus watching the movie, The Running Man, two totally different things. Two uh, totally also, different. also, you can go on to yes, 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 with. Yes, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you Predator. I'll give you Predator as well because yeah. because he says the line that's iconic in the Predator movies. You're one ugly motherfucker. I, I like I'm Jessica Ventura. Right, I'm talking about Apollo Creed, but I'm going to get my arm cut off. But if you Pause it and look, and I do. <laughs> Shoot from the hip! But if you pause it really correctly, you can see the fact that my other arm is up in the inside of my shirt. Shoot from the hip! I, no, no, no. I like bunch of slack, John faggots. This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Just like me. Uh, another iconic role. The, the thing with Schwarzenegger, he doesn't have just one role that defines him because, that yeah, he has that, that that thing where he always comes out of a line and everyone makes it famous. Again, Jingle All the Way, famous yeah. for all the wrong reasons. I, I, I've never seen that movie. It, 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 
Put that cookie down! Now! Kindergarten cop, it is not a tumor! My favorite line for that movie is when the bloke's about to break into his car. He just goes, he goes there's my car. And he just goes, yo man, I was just going to keep an eye on it for you. I, I like the part I like the part on the plane where the kid's screwing around back there and he takes the pencil like, hey, if you don't stop screwing around back there, this won't go through you. And he just snaps the pencil and the kid just sits is it, up. Is, is, is this Terrible. true about North America, by the way? Because it's fucked up if it is. Um, you have nap time in kindergarten? Dude, we have nap time in nursery. Nap time in kindergarten? We have nap time in nursery. go to sleep now. Because if that was England, Sean, it would be like, everyone go and nick the wheels off a car right now. Actually, no, because when I was in nursery, they told us to do the same thing. It's nap time, go get some sleep, then I'll get some sleep, and then they'll wake it's up and we'll have a story. It's fucking... That's Dave, like, Dave, hey, if you if you right. have if you uh, have children, we ones, they have to take a nap. It's part of the growth process, and it's also the fact that they run around all day like little devils... That they're gonna need a nap. I'm sorry, Burhan. Can um, I'll, I'll go and sit on the naughty step. You should. Just over there, that corner over there, Dave. Okay, so Schwartz, Schwarzenegger. Um, so Anina saying Terminator. I'm saying put it out, Sean. Hercules in New York. <laughs> no, <laughs> seriously. Uh, it's also called Hercules Goes Bananas. <laughs> you hit Hercules. <laughs> but um. Oh, what was it? Um, oh, I'm trying to think. A uh, raw deal, actually, which is so ridiculous because they would insert his character in so many ridiculous movies and so many ri ridiculous situations, and he's like this very heavily voiced Austrian, but they get him to infiltrate an American mob. I know, Fuck it, sakes! And, and also, Austrians in Cinema Land um, are always portrayed as Russians. Mm, yeah, fucking uh, Red Heat with the. Uh, Jim Belushi. Yeah. Oh, what's this like piece of shit doing on the, the floor? Room. He says he lives there. <laughs> I like the part where he just walks into the hotel room, turns on the TV, yeah. it's a porn, he and he just says, capitalism. He just looks at the TV and yeah. says, capitalism. Yeah. Oh, say it, Sean. Say it. I love this corner. Capitalism. <laughs> he just you know, he looks at the like, TV. In Russia, TV doesn't watch. Again, this is this is again another iconic saying that he did because the saying's used everywhere. Like in Mother Russia, you don't ride chocobo, chocobo rides you. In Mother yeah, Russia, that, you don't catch Pokemon, Pokemon catches you. There's loads of these. Um, yeah, in Mother Russia, you don't catch herpes, herpes catch you. Uh, and again, if you're going for Conan, Conan's hilarious because every time, oh my god, every time you hear I Conan, don't every like Conan because he's got bad hair. Well, whenever he fights in uh, Conan, he just stands there, goes, ah, 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 ah. Oh my god, yes, he's always bleeding. But the <laughs> little fucking Chamberlain, the basketball players in the second one, is his fucking traveling companion for fuck's sakes. Will the fucking still? Dave, what about you? It's Iconic. Most iconic Arnold Schwarzenegger role? Commando. Any bloke who can walk into a fucking utility shed and kill everyone. Game on. I, I do like the fact that his, the main villain in that movie was a big, fat Australian dude. Who looked like Freddie Oh my Mercury. god. Yeah, Freddie Who's Mercury's the fat. The on the barbie, Cheech Marin. Who's the bird? Who's the little girl? Um... What's, What's the, the name? From Who's the Boss? Yeah. Yeah. And she's in uh, Charmed as well. Every time I watch Charmed, I'm like, that's the girl I who was like the... Charmed. She was the daughter of Arnold Schwarzenegger in the... Oh my God, they're her boobies. What? I just mm. like to see her tits move slightly to the right in every episode. My, You know what makes me laugh? My mum was like going to me, these are how real witches work. And I was like, what? With their boobies out? Just saying. That's... Could be worse. I watch that show with the sound off. <laughs> I am sorry, Anina. Okay, I am offended for you. And you have to watch her eye trying to escape. 
You know, there's one thing I, I do want to point out on this. On this, I've never heard Anina just sit there and go, "Well, I watch his crotch just walking, going left to right." You know, because Hugh Jackman's amazing with his crotch. Never heard us. Oh man, he Hugh Jackman so Who's the guy that does it for you, Anina? I'm, 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 I'm a straight bloke, but Anina, if <laughs> Hugh Jackman doesn't do it for you. I have a very weird taste in men. This has been established. I like skinny blokes, skinny tall blokes with. with she likes Michael with, Sarah. With with high with high cheekbones. So Michael it's Sarah. Hugh, Hugh Jackman is too built for me. Yeah, apparently he can push a thousand pounds. Ooh. Yeah. Steroids. With his oh. sphincter. Sorry. With his sphincter, uh, I think his sphincter is very small. Um. Go going on that now. I got Who? One. I got one. All right, Dave. The rest of us alone, Rocky. I, I oh, you know, a oh. ditto on that one. Um, ladies and gentlemen, on the Arnold Schwarzenegger note, which Arnold Schwarzenegger role do you think? Do let, it, settle man. the settle the tie. Settle the tie. Is it Terminator? I'll be back. Predator. Predator. Uh, you are one ugly motherfucker, and get to the jabber I now. You won't see me. Like, fuck off. Or was it Sean's role? Sean, what was yours? Raw deal. Raw deal. Ooh, Just the fact that it's such a ridiculous concept. And he has really bad hair. Oh, oh it's a slick back. In fact, I think it's the only Arnie movie where he has really bad hair. Get the job now. See him try to play an Italian American. <laughs> so go, going on to um, Mr. Stallone why Rocky Dave? Cuss 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 it's Rocky it... he wrote the fucking ball alright right. ignore the early movies and go to the, the, the you know like kind of late movies but he just you, you, sir, you're downtrodden, and everything about your life is shit. Don't you want something better? And then Rocky IV comes alive, and it's just, oh. Living know. in America. <laughs> I, ju I, I just think. It is. Taking all. Jump you know, back. Kiss the sale. <laughs> Pull a creed. I don't know what he's fucking saying. I just think that, you know, Rocky is a, a good, and dare I say this, a good role model. Because he's about everything which is punch above your weight. And um, Rocky IV is the best. You remember, Rocky, Mickey loves you. Now I want you to, I, I want you to, like, uh, chew lightning and crap thunder. I, I see three one. of them out there. Punch one in the middle. There's actually here in, here in North America years ago, there was a Lipton Brisk Ice Tea commercial where they had the, the claymation characters and they had Rocky in the ring. And he's there, and, all, and uh, I remember the one line. It's like, Oh, who keeps ringing that bell? I can't concentrate. <laughs> but you get my point, right? Which is, um, I, think, I think it's crass in Cold War as it is. Um, I think Rocky IV is brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and a great uplifting movie. Actually, Rocky Balboa is my favorite one to watch because it's just it's 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 my guy movie to go to when you're feeling a little sad, but you look at how you can put things behind you and just look at life and say that yeah. you've done well. Yeah, accept it. Basically, sorry, that's on your plate. You don't like it? I, lo I, lo I love Rocky Balboa. Tough shit. That's how your life played out. Uh, and, uh, one of the greatest speeches in, um, and if we're talking about, you know, <clears throat> people who encapsulate, uh, people who encapsulate, uh, you know, spirit and heart and soul. One of the greatest speeches in, uh, in movie history is when Rocky talks to his kid and he goes, 
That's how winning is done. I put that up as my cover page on Facebook at one point. That Such a great, genius. great quote. It's not about how, how hard life hits. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving. That is a and that's great how winning is done. Yeah. Or if you're uh, Floyd Mayweather, it's... Your knees. Or if you're Floyd Mayweather, you just... Uh, how hard you can yeah, hug. Brilliant. Genius. I love that. Because, you know... And that's why he wrote the fucking movies. He was, he was actually a good writer. Except for the fact that he was going to be in Beverly Hills Cop, but when he rewrote it, they looked at it and said, we don't got the budget for this. Let's get the guy from Saturday Night Live. Uh, it was. Uh, I'm not going to say he was a good writer. I say he was a credible writer because he has wrote some yeah, shit. Well, I mean, like you give him the right material. Yeah, look at the Expendables movies. They they're terrible. No offense. Yeah, they're they are terrible. What? But um, uh, uh, terrible. Like, amazing <laughs> selfie I took. Um, I would like to say this that uh, the last Expendables <laughs> movie, uh, Expendables movie sucked because you made it PG thirteen. It wasn't just that. Yeah. I mean, uh, fucking uh, Chicken Lang, Chicken Lang, fucking uh, Wesley Snipes. What'd you go to jail for? Taxi base. And ironically, he did. And you can see the boy. Yeah. Um, okay, so Anina Stallone, roll. I agree. It is Rocky. I mean, he wrote, he did the very smart thing of writing yourself the perfect role. He knows what Which he you can did. do. He knows write? how to do it. He's perfect for it. And he chose... A re it's a really... Hop... You know, it makes... It's emotive. It makes you feel. Great action. It's an all-around great film. Action! You know, it, it's just... It just You get some feels. You get some fighting. Great balance. And uh, Mr. Shaw Michelin, are you going to make it 4 for 4? Um, uh, yeah, I was going to say stop, my mom will shoot, but, uh, yeah, definitely I'm going to go with Rocky. It's, it, it, yeah. He crafted that very carefully. He did. He, he took a lot of time and he took a lot of effort towards it. Um, he, 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 he swears off Rocky five, but honestly, Rocky five was a decent movie in its own right for how you can get so high to the top and then you just have legs fall out from it and you just back to where you started. I liked it. I felt it was a good movie for what it the was. The thing I always say about the Rocky franchise, which is between Rocky Five and Rocky Six, which is I've got um, unrepairable da uh, brain damage. Rocky Six? Oh, it's fixed. Yeah, well, I, I they, did, that was... They, they tried to do the caveat of saying it wasn't as serious and medical technology, blah, 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 which is just like, and we'll forget about Rocky Five. I just want to drain... I didn't hate Rocky Five, by the way. I didn't. I, li I liked it for what it was. He was I did too. I, mean, I kind of, you know, you know, I liked it for what it was, but it isn't this sound Didn't like the musical good? direction so much. Oh, God, that was fucking shit. I can't wait for Rocky the musical starring Stallone. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. If it's... If his movie with Dolly Parton has anything about his musical talents, oh we're in for a treat. Hey, yeah. Gotta get that greasy, like, comb your hair the pork chop. Gotta oh, get the. Uh, 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 I gotta say, uh, uh, I did laugh at it a bit. This is the way we wash our gun, wash our gun, wash our gun. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's four for four, ladies and gentlemen, on Stallone. So next one, uh, Mr. Sean Michelin, who are you picking? Oh, for a typecast actor. Jesus, so many fucking choices. Uh, Mel Brooks. Ooh, what role? Difficult. Yeah, he, he does pretty much play the same role a lot of times, but there's so many different roles at the same time. Mm. I got to pick, though... Spaceball. He always plays more of like he's oh, never too pivotal in his movies. Mean. But oh, you look at his character in Spaceballs, and you look at his character in Blazing Saddles. They're pretty much the same kind of buffoonish guy in charge kind of thing, but he's not like the main character. Unlike in History of the World Part One, where it was all sketches. But yeah, and, and you look at Spaceballs, especially and Blazing Saddles. He pretty much plays the same kind of buffoonish, out of control, foppish kind of in charge. It appears to be Raspberry Jam. Sorry. <laughs> 
My bad. But, you know, it's, it's just because I like Mel Brooks as well. Okay. Um, for me, I'm going to go with Spaceballs. Because the Schwartz. Can I get this on Blu-ray? What, Mel? Spaceballs, I believe, is on Blu-ray, so is Blazing Saddles. Nice. And by the way, The History of the World Part 1 and 2... You, if you haven't seen it, you got to see it. It's got Steve Gutenberg as a cameo. Here we go. The Inquisition. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Inquisition. Oh, sorry. It's my favorite <laughs> musical number he's ever done. I, I do like the Steve Gutenberg and the credit card situation. That always cracked me up. <laughs> oh, my God. I like that B. Arthur is the unemployment officer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a flash, stand of pleasure. Oh, you're a bullshitter. How long has it been since you last bullshitted? <laughs> there's the, he had a good ensemble though there for and you know there's that one speaking of catchphrases there's that one line he made the whole song it's good to be the king. So Anina, uh, what about you? Uh, uh, it's a toss up between two. Um, is he in Ooh. Men in Tights Ooh. or did he just direct that one? Ooh. Cool. Oh, it was Rabbi Tuchman. Yeah, it was it. Oh, I. Oh, this is really hard. What do you do? I do circumcisions. Say, I'm gonna say producers. Oh producers, my God. because they have the Master Ace song, which is hilarious and inappropriate and, but and the wrong. The rest of the movie is shite. I love that film. The other Master Race. Oh, I'm sorry. That's just. In there. Well, well, Blazing Saddles, if you made it in this day and age, you would have so many people up in arms. Oh, but just Christ, yeah. the, the PC Brigade would have a bone of the size of fucking Paris. That movie was so racist. <laughs> it was, but it was Richard Pryor was one of the goddamn writers on it, for fuck's sakes. It's funny racist. Like, if anyone's yeah. seen Richard Pryor's stand-up <laughs> routine, he, like, everyone's <laughs> like, oh, I that's Richard Pryor, he's so... Yeah, but it's it's says, it's commenting on racism. It's different. There's difference between commenting on racism using humor and just being racist. And being racist, yeah. There's a massive difference. <laughs> well, I mean, it's well, funny though. Cleveland little scared um, sheriff. The next time I ever get chastised at work, <laughs> I'm just gonna say it's funny racist. Well, I gotta I gotta say though, the, there's that one line that really redeems it all in in um, in. Um, in Blazing Saddles, where he makes out that he holds up himself, and everybody's like, don't do it, that's just what you want, kind of thing, and uh, when he gets back to the sheriff's office, like, mm, baby, you so good, and they so dumb. <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> Men in Tights like, gets an honorable mention, though. I love Men in Tights. We're men! Best We're men in tights! tights yes! fight with the poles. And they get the only Robin like, Hood with the British accent. Um, they, 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 they get co- um, constantly, you know, shut down, and uh, but they end up with like just like twigs flicking each other's fingers. Brilliant. Okay, um, Anina, you're next. Oh, to pick something. Hmm. Let's choose a woman. Just for... Elephant Room Dave. Oh, you sexy beast. That's just to get some estrogen into this. Um, Sigourney Weaver as Ripley. Oh, good call. Totally agree. Um, favorite, totally. One of my favorite movies is Aliens. And they are doing a, they're doing a sequel after Aliens uh, in the upcoming movies. They're trying to remove Alien 3 and Resurrection from canon. Thank God, because Joss Whedon made one hell of a fucking turkey with the resurrection. Oh, the God, that was terrible. Ron Perlman. Earth, what a shit. I just like the bit when they froze the alien at the start. I, resurrection, I like the alien through the pinhole. That was kind of disgusting. Mm. Yeah, that's <laughs> And the chest bursts are through the dude's like head. It's like half human, half alien. Oh, oh I mean, fucking like, yes. Yes. Did, bit, did, you wanna, yes, did that make you want to have children, Anina? Huh? Did, did that did that movie make you want to have children? Well, that, that's one of the reasons I quote for why I do not want to have children. Because it would look like a big pudgy alien yeah, thing. Because that could come out. That World could defense. Come out. <laughs> and then I'd be See like all the, all the failed clones. And I'd be like a tiger mummy going, 
No, but my baby does nothing wrong. With it, bodies strewn it, everywhere. But my baby can't do anything wrong. Your baby ain't burned! I'll be entertained at the fact that the, the, the main scientist in Alien Resurrection is the voice of Chucky, Brad Dourif. Oh, yeah. He was also He's in a beautiful your butterfly. butterfly. Um, yes, he was. The, the, the creepy guy. I can't remember his name. Shoot me. I'm a Lord of the Rings fan and I can't He's remember. In, yeah, the second and the third one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um... Yeah, it, I gotta agree with Sigourney Weaver there in those movies. She she made those movies. She yes, she did. There's not enough I mean, female action heroes. There's not enough. <laughs> I liked her in Paul as well. Yeah. She is kick uh, it, But it's so unceremonious how they fucking got rid of her at the end when they just dropped the fucking gangplank for the fucking UFO on her. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed all six feet of her into the fucking ground. Mm-hmm. She's tall, eh? She is. What? Oh. I like I seeing her dating DeVito side by side. Like I really do. That's one of my aims in life. Is Actually, that... they should make a buddy movie with her and Danny DeVito. They should make a buddy movie uh, with Danny DeVito and green screen him to make him into, like, the Seven Dwarfs. Oh, my Jesus. Oh, my God. It'll be crabby and flatulent, belligerent, drunk. Horny. Oh, no. <laughs> Danny DeVito, Danny DeVito, Danny DeVito. Danny. That's oh. a lot of Danny DeVitos. Yeah. Oh my god, I, ju I, I can just imagine him times seven. Mm. I think we're all for getting great. And one uh, of them, one of them should look like, um, what was that animated film he was in? He was orange. He was orange and fuzzy. Oh, Lorax. Yeah, one of the dwarves should be the Lorax. Yeah. Or him in, him in him in orange him body, him body paint. Sexual. I think we're all forgetting the greatest Danny scene ever, which is, um, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I and love the that show, they're so horrible. And the chair gives birth to Danny. Genius. Genius. I mean... No, the greatest Danny DeVito role is uh, him as the penguin. <laughs> and the... <laughs> You know what? I've got to agree with you on that because oh, most exactly. most of his roles have just been him being him. Mm. With the penguin, he actually played a character and he played it really well. He my does. name. He, break, he broke that's my heart. That's... Every time I watch it, he breaks my heart. Yeah, it was a very. I like he was a like, Okay, he was wounded. He was I I can I can He's see the way so that Burton painted wow. him. He was really really well done in my opinion. Yeah, he was a. So that was in pain, and he needs a cuddle. Well, I mean, like, uh, he, he said that the one line that really put it in perspective was like, you know, if it wasn't for circumstance, pretty much, I would have been in boarding school with you, Bruce Wayne, kind of thing, right? Mm. Because he was a rich kid, too, but he, you know, his parents didn't want him. And I like that. It's like, it. you, was it you, 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 you're ashamed of it, I flaunt it, or something like that. You put it in your crapper, I put it up on my mantle. I, I, I lo he had a lot of good lines in that movie, though. Another one is, um, um, you know, he sees uh, Michelle Fiverr's character and he just walks in and just looks at her and says, just the pussy I've been looking for. But you know what? I think... Yeah. attitude to him as well. He's like, he took Burgess Meredith and not so much channeled him, but he, like, complimented him. But you know what? I, I think as well, that movie was character... It, it was basically done right in terms of characters because you had Batman who was developed in the first movie, so they didn't have to develop him as much. Then the focus went on to Oswald Cobblepot, basically the Penguin's character, and Catwoman, because they mm. centralised and focused on building their stories, while Batman kind of maintained his story. You know, so he was a character in in kind of in their movie, and I think it worked really well. I think Burton really knew how to kind of mesh these stories out. Uh, you know, the Avengers: Age of Ultron. I'm gonna I'm gonna point a finger at you guys there. You don't know how to do that. You kept focusing on your central characters a little too much. Yeah, That's another review. some weren't even hardly developed at all. Like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not, to, not to plug somebody, but CU Podcast there at the Pat and Ian, they kind of said, like, they could have developed uh, the, the Wanda uh, Pietro uh, relationship a bit more. To give, uh, no, no, just to, give, just to give what happens later on more poignancy. I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah. I enjoyed the movie, but I enjoyed it in the fact of it was better than the first. It was an event movie. It wasn't really like. Yeah. 
it, it, there, there was no story structure or characters. It was kind of like, hey, Tony Stark's bored. Um, let's just make a robot that's going to destroy the world. Just give us something to do. But I like James Spader's on that role. This I do. podcast is about, is it? But I'm... I gotta say, though, I did like James Spader's Ultron. Because, you know, he wasn't this cold, mechanical thing. He he had attitude. And Boy. he had... Like, Tude. Tude. Not so much Tude, though, but, like, you see, you see in his motivation, right? He wasn't just like, I am Ultron, I want to kill the world. He's like, he's snotty, he's snide, he's he's arrogant. He still needed a lot more development, though. The, the, the character, yeah, I felt, yeah. needed a slower well, build. Yeah. Apparently, eh? Yeah, and also, I, I think this shouldn't have been left to one movie. It needed to be developed over a couple of movies. Um, I think there's way too many people on screen. Yeah, that too. Avengers. There's just too too much going on. Too many people, too much going on. And I think they're just going to keep adding more and more characters. There was a lot they didn't it's explain. It's going to be superheroes. That's why too. I said spoilers. There was, a, there was a lot they didn't explain in terms of that as well, which kind of annoyed me. It's like... Uh, uh, and again, ladies and gents, spoilers on on this. Um, they they also with Quicksilver's death. It was like, I, why do I care? Why do I care? Uh, you, you know, the, you're you're not an established I character. Do. I don't I know who the fuck you are. You know, Ultron was just like people hate you, and you're assuming that these guys that people know what the fuck they're talking about. People do I never accept you, and I'm like, why wouldn't they accept them? They're just superheroes. Well, well, I don't, I don't get it. Why, why is there a problem? And the bad Russian accents. Oh God. Well, what you mean for Wanda and him? They're, yeah. They're, they're oh Russian, God. Slovakian. I find they're, like they're, whatever. They're, they're more right, Eastern right. European. I did. I couldn't tell. They, they did. Still, they did Russian accents rather than Eastern. I, European. I, I really couldn't tell. Yeah, because there's a fictional country or something, wasn't it? Yeah, I really couldn't tell. I really couldn't tell at all. I like though they actually had Bettany, who was the voice of fucking Jarvis, as the Vision. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that. I felt. I like, I like, I like Bettany a lot, actually. I do. Great. Even in that priest movie, it was a bit, you know, contrived and schmaltzy and weird, but I liked him in that. He's well, let's. He's a very underused actor, I think. He Let, is. Let's go on to the the Avengers then. Let's go on to. <laughs> Um, let's oh. let's do a round robin with the cast of characters of the Avengers and talk about their iconic roles. So Robert Downey Jr. We'll start with him because oh he's the God. most recognised. Uh, what role is he known for in terms of iconic? Charlie Chaplin. I'm playing a dude dressed as dude disguised as another dude. <laughs> I like that. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? That character from Tropic Thunder the whole like making fun of like character actors and things like that like is it was a nice blend of like Russell Crowe and Daniel Day-Lewis and a few others uh, that that one is iconic in in the level of satire i find but you know besides yeah. tony stark is the obvious choice i uh, stay in the role to the audio commentary yeah <laughs> he's like i don't break character until you do commentary baby well, I do like I so. Uh, so does, does Justin like to put his balls on your face? <laughs> Lance, Lance, who the fuck is Lance? <laughs> I love that. And then oh. fucking Jack Blake's character is like, come on over. Get, do you know what? I'll even swallow gravy. But yeah. Do you know what the great thing about is. that is that he did a black guy and then it automatically turned into an Australian afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah, it really were. I, I, for for me, he's so so good. It's like people don't understand that this guy had a very healthy back catalogue of uh, acting. I actually made a joke to someone recently. Uh, I was actually making a joke to my mum. I was like, maybe if I should get a drug addiction and get a coke habit and hookers, maybe I'll be able to become like a a big Hollywood actor. Playing, but just had a revolver. Yeah, he's he's gone through some troubled times, and uh, you know, I'm not make, uh, taking any shots at him. He's paid his dues. He's come back, and he's but he's was one of those people who can always his talent always shines through. And then there's that really uncomfortable interview that you sent me. Yeah, I'm I'm not going to talk about that because I just I really that really pissed me off. Um, and Channel Four oh, should have known was, better. Was that about asking about his uh, about his addictions in, in the past? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, they shouldn't have had to rehash that. He was very open about it in, the, in when it was going on and that. So I mean, why fucking reopen old wounds? Is past, right? 
that's the only thing I, I see it from there. No, I agree with you, and that's that's and it wasn't the interview wasn't about that, and that's where the problem lay. <laughs> uh, plus, the the interviewer looked very very awkward asking him that question. But so you're you're going by um, Tropic Thunder for you, Sean. What about yeah. you, Mister Lawnboy? Charlie Chaplin. Seriously. Yes. Because Chaplin's a great you, role. You you can you can laugh at me for picking that movie, but he's fucking amazing in it. Who's fapping? Sounds like there's fapping. That's Dave. <laughs> um, so Anina, what about you? Uh, Nina? Uh, Nina, she disappeared. Hopefully she'll be Hello? back. Oh, there you go. What role, what RDJ role stood out for you? For me? Um, I haven't seen Chaplin, which I really do want to, because apparently do that it, is... Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it now. <laughs> no! Oh, send it to me. Someone send it to me. I will. Um, it's brilliant. It's before absolutely... Iron Man, he did have some great roles. Um, I would say, for me, Sherlock, because before Ooh. I was dragged to see oh, the Sherlock film, I was course. absolutely dragged to see them. I didn't want to see them. I thought, oh, everyone does Sherlock. It's really boring. He does a killer British accent in that yeah, as well. Richie. And then I came out and I kind of sat there with my arms crossed going, no, oh, I'm going to hate this. And then I, it, the film ended and I was like, I love that. So... To be able to, I was already, I was ready to hate the film, and he completely changed my mind. And all, also the other actors in that film changed my mind. Can I, can I Love interject? Mm -hmm. um, which is, um, I, I really wanted to hate the movie, the, the, those movies, but the one bit, the one scene in the first movie that um, just kind of was great cinematography that. You know, <clears throat> won me round was the whole um, Sherlock Holmes beating up the bloke in the start. Yeah, that was a funny well, plans that all over his head. Yeah, yeah, that that it. was fucking genius. That was brilliant. That was mm -hmm. just like that. That that's what cinema is made for, which mm. is oh, you know, I'm gonna count to five. Boom. Um, he's got this inflection upon his face. Boom. And it was just, oh, that was brilliant. That was brilliant. Yeah, I got I to gotta agree with you there, too, Nina. I, I was awaiting that movie on bated breath because, uh, as well, the director, Guy Ritchie, like Madonna, kind of really fucking neutered him, so to speak, I felt. But I, I thought to myself, so, well, he's free of no, her no, now. No. And that bloody, what was it, Swept Away movie or some shit like that? But, I mean, like, the last movie I'd seen him uh, direct before was uh, was Snatch, and I enjoyed Snatch. So I thought to myself, well, I'm going to give it a chance. It's Robert Downey Jr. It's Jude Law. Yeah, I felt though with Guy Ritchie, he kind of went to the well a little bit too many times in terms of yeah, his movies. Did. Um, I did like Sherlock because it kind of freshened things up a little. It made him really like obsessive compulsive in a lot of ways, in, in a lot of good ways. Like, you know, you didn't just see this, oh, the guy has the answer for everything thing, but this is the guy that like really looked at all the nooks and crannies, so to speak, and, you know, took yeah, a lot of things it, to, it, into it, account. It, it, isn't that what you wanted from Sherlock, though? That's why yeah, I love this well, movie, which is, you know, right, he's the greatest, you know, criminal mind in the world, but why would that not be based upon the fact if he got stuck in fisticuffs? Genius. Oh, I yeah. like that. I like as well. Um... More, you know, uh, take Sherlock and put something new into it. And it was still in Victorian London, which I enjoyed. Mm. So there was just something new and fresh about something that's been done a million times oh my god yes mm. i mean even simultaneously because you know cumberbatch has that series as well at the same yeah. time <laughs> which enough. i love as well but anyway no you just love cumberbatch that i do but um, well, that's a great great series are you a cumber bitch anina oh <laughs> <laughs> that that that's my that's my man type oh that's her man can do. Uh, I, do, I do like that. She's like, she watches a Cumberbatch thing, and then to to our other half, she's like, right, get in the bedroom. Do you floss get in the bedroom and wear this Cumberbatch mask. Do it. <laughs> Luke sends me pictures of Benedict Cumberbatch. He knows. He's like, here you go. 
<laughs> they like, shh, 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 don't talk. <laughs> oh, my, my boyfriend's hot. I don't need to. <laughs> Benedict. Oh, Benedict, that's not my name. Shh. <laughs> Gold deeper, deeper, deeper. Because he does have that very really... bass voice. Oh, yeah, that voice is really funny. Um, one of my mates at work who's um, um, gay goes, do you know why we like Cumberbatch? Because we just don't know. We just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he really throws out the gator, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> Always gator on nine. He's got gator cloaking, see? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. But I'm um, char. He he was really good as uh, Khan. I I felt. Yes, he oh, was. He My was, name yes. is Khan. Yeah, he's. Now that is the ultimate sexy role, Khan. Oh, the ultimate sexy role. Is I know what to buy you for your birthday, Anina. I know what to buy you. I don't need to buy you porn. I'll just buy you uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. I'll be like, here you go. Just don't tell yeah, me what you, you do should. with it. I don't have that film. I was thinking about buying it. Oh, it's so good. But like, it's here you go. Yeah, just don't. Me that film. And then I can say to my boyfriend, oh, I got it as a gift. I didn't buy it. I like, it was that little shaking thing in your bag that went along with it. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to buy her flowers. Boo. Oh, and... Are you going to buy me flowers? Oh, that's sweet. See, if you bought me flowers, you'd probably kill me. Anyway. Yeah, um, you're a bloke. Why would I buy you flowers? You're a bloke. Fine, I'm not worth flowers, right? Yeah, um, so let's. I tell you what, I'll buy you a turd. Robert Downey Jr. We're back on him. For me, I'm gonna say it, the most iconic role, and I'm sad to say this because he's such a quality actor, and everyone knows what I'm gonna say here. Iron Man. He oh, redefined um, that role. Plus, the role made him like basically. It, it's made him, it reassociated him as being a household name, and he generated over a billion dollar revenue for that role. Not for himself, for that role. He, I think, mm. for himself, he made something like what was it, like five hundred million off of the role. Oh, oh yeah, he did. Uh, he... Just imagine this though: they had Tom Cruise for that role years ago. Yeah, That's and also person. Leonardo DiCaprio. Doesn't he own franchise rights as well? He gets a cut of the box office. Yeah. Lucky bastard. Yeah, it's he called a back end. negotiate for the other actors to get more, which I like. Mm -hmm. Seems like a decent bloke. He said, no, they should get paid more more as well. As a footnote, anybody see the video where he showed up uh, to give a young boy a prosthetic and he had the yes, prosthetic? He I came dressed that. as Tony Stark and he showed up with a Stark Industries box with a prosthetic in it. It's an Anderson oh, Iron Man prosthetic. That's cool. the, yeah, kind yeah, of awesome. I, I, I saw that video. It was absolutely apish. Made me well up. So, going on from that one, um, ladies and gentlemen, we're at, we're kind of at stalemate again. Let <laughs> us know, Robert Downey Jr., your favourite role. Am I right with Iron Man? Is uh, Sean right in terms of his role with Tropic Thunder? Is Anina right with Sherlock? And is Dave right with Chaplin? Let us know. So, going on from Trust that me. one. People, trust me, watch Chaplin. Going on from that one, we've got to add a bit more Feminine Worlds to this one. Last but not least, we're going to do one more. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Tell us how you're real, feel. Uh, Dave. Are you are you basically like having your vinegar strokes at the moment? Um, I, 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 I can't stand the cow. Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. The only man in existence. Don't get me wrong. I'd love to um, <laughs> play with her jubblies if you know what I mean. Uh, she's uh, so shallow. And she milks, and I know this is outside of movie land, but she just milks her fucking <clears throat> presence. And, oh, it's not fair, it's not fair, it's not fair. The paparazzi follow me around, they follow me around. It's not fair, it's not fair. You're famous, fuck off. Oh, the, the the bits get to my tits, really. The bits get gotta, to my I, tits, I, I and I get and and I'm gonna stand by this, which is Jeremy Clarkson. Even though you're fired from the BBC, but when you weren't, how dare you bring her onto Top Gear? That was hallowed ground. That was my ground, and you bought that shallow little 
pussy. Hey, you don't know. They could have made her a stig and you didn't even know about it. Mm. At least if she was the stig, they could fire her after three seasons. But no, no she's so fucking annoying. And when she was talking on Top Gear about how <laughs> how, how prevalent G.I. Joe is as a movie. That's how she talked, not me, by the way. Like, no, it's not, you fucking idiot. And don't you dare compare your chase scene to the Blues Brothers because you did and you're an idiot. That was classy. Your shit. Fuck Dave, off. Dave, I gotta mention something about the Blues Brothers thing. When I play racing games, I have music playing in the background. I, uh, I uh, play Can't Turn You Loose. Especially nice. if it's like a racing yeah. game where I'm driving. I play I play flat out Ultimate Carnage, and there's a few tracks where you drive through a mall. So <laughs> I have, the game, yeah, I have nice song playing. Oh. No, that's my what problem with her, which is she, she's just a floating little fucking air brain of a twat. And it's, how the fuck did you carve out a career for yourself? Her ass. But, yash, but at the same time, I do like the tits. They're quite impressive. Okay, um, after that tangent, let's go uh, on to Anina. Anina, Scott Johansson, iconic role. None. I'm gonna say lost in translation. Oh, I watch that. that. Tell us why. It's sad for me. Fantastic film. film. Tell us I, why. I actually think Scarlett Johansson is a good actor. She's a fucking idiot. I don't know. Well, I haven't met her, but she. You see that on the on the video quotes. On on screen. You know, for the for the Avengers: Age of Ultron, it's gonna be like smashing movie, iconic film. And then Dave Wade's going to be like, she's a fucking idiot, Dave Wade. I will agree with that movie, because that's a fantastic movie. But, in my defense, I will agree with that movie, simply because Bill Murray is a god. Okay, so, Anina, you're saying Lost in Translation mm -hmm. because of the way that her character was portrayed in that movie. That and it was also, it was kind of her defining role, it was her breakout yeah. role. I like that, and I agree with you. Um, I I'm, I'm going to... Nina, she's got great tits. Two for four on that one. So uh, don't worry about Dave, ladies and gentlemen. He's kind of been uh, drinking his lunch. So a liquid lunch. A liquid lunch and a liquid breakfast, by the sounds of it. Molson meal, we call that here. Sean, Sean Michelin. Um, I'm going to go out on, on a different uh, role. By the way, and, and... people, I'm not that plastered. I'm annoyed. He says, talking <laughs> over everyone. Sean. The drug stage, denying everything. Exactly, uh, Sean. Reminded me of that line of beer fest. We're not that drunk. Um, for me, uh, because commenting on Dave and about using her physical qualities and that as as uh, uh, part of her role, her character in uh, 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 Don John or whatever it was with um, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, where she played his perfect ten, so to speak. So it was all about her looks, really. And oh my God, though that accent that she had, the Jersey accent, was just like, oh, but it just. For the fact of, like, yeah, for her as physically I as a role. I think you mean a boot. A boot. Right. No dude to boot it. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, for, well, for the fact that she's she's playing the pretty face that, that she's known for as well. It, it wasn't a bad role, although I more like Julia Moore's relationship with Joseph Gordon Levitt's character. Um, There's a lot about growing up, but she did really epitomize what guys look for and what she plays a lot of times. Amazing There's, breasts. Amazing, a lot of stuff. But I got, I got one bit of respect for her after she did Avengers, the first one, and that, and they asked her, what do you, what do you uh, plan on doing and afterwards? Well, she said, oh, because I don't have to keep Slim and Trim now, I'm going to stop at every Buffalo Wing place and I'm just going to load up. Oh, so, load up on me, sugar tits. <laughs> Shoot the thrill? <laughs> But yeah, I, I didn't mind her done, John. Although, like I said, the accent could have had a bit more, you know, work. Although they were they were kind of going for the heavy Jersey accent. I haven't seen Lost in Translation, so I can't agree with it. It's a great just, movie. Yeah, it, it's it's on my to watch list there. Um, watch it, watch it now. <laughs> watch it now. No. Um, I can't really think of many other roles besides, you know, yeah. She played the strong female as as Black Widow a couple times. Although, what the hell was up Talking that fucking Tron, that Tron suit that she had? She 
Jesus. Yeah, it's because she was pregnant at the time of filming. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Um, so, Dave. I expected her to whip that lights on. Kid? No, it's because her role was kind of limited. The reason why she wasn't in many of the fight scenes, like there was that scene where she was kidnapped by Ultron and she left the vicinity of the area instead of fighting. If it was she got the kid, I'm sorry, I can't put my winky in you. Okay, Dave, <laughs> focus. Wow. <laughs> Iconic role for you. One that you tolerated her in. Uh, dude, I really and, hope... And, and... Shut up, you slag. Um... <laughs> And Nina was right, which is uh, lost in translation, which is an absolutely amazing movie. So that's three for four on lost in translation for Scarlett Johansson. And you know what? I did lie. I said this was going to be the last one. But because Dave mentioned him, let's do Bill fucking Murray. Yes. So Thank you, you slag. Bill Murray is a, a, a actor who's defined by many, Bill many Murray roles. I did a fortnight on him on my channel, so check it out if you guys uh, want to check that out on him. The Today most defined. Like, um, well, yes. Yes, we did. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Anita. I gotta add to what you said there about Bill Murray, there, Michael. It's pretty much as uh, Woody Harrelson's character put it in um, in Zombieland. He's like, I've been you know, watching you since before I could masturbate. Not that the two are related. Yeah. <laughs> It's true, though. Bill Murray, ever since I, I was a kid, love man, that I've even seen his Saturday Night Live stuff because my grandparents had a video rental business and they had these CEDs. Uh, uh, anybody who watches James Rolfe and watch some of his side videos he did, he showed the different video formats that he has. And CEDs like this weird kind of uh, laser disc, but it's more like a, 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 a videotape. They, they stick it in, in the cartridge. Yeah, yeah. But um, they had the first... Uh, episode of Saturday Night Live and then the first episode from the next season was and he was in those nice. and so I got to see his work from his beginning at, and at a young age uh, while being at a young age and seeing it progress like not just Ghostbusters and things like that but I mean uh, what about Bob that was actually pretty uh, cool. what about Bob is a fucking underrated gem oh my god the guy who knew what too little that? the man who knew too like, little oh my god yes I love the guy who knew too little Oh, you read it? Fuck. Yes. Oh, How about we go on to Bill Murray for, for that, for for character fact, people who talk in, cast? In, 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 in fact, Burhan, I demand that you cut this podcast off and we have a separate one on Bill Murray. Uh, maybe another time. Uh, I think people are dying for sleep anyway. So, um, I'm, I'm going to say, that. I'm going to say just because Ghostbusters. Back oh. off. I'm a scientist. He's amazing in that movie. He stands out from the majority of the characters. And his killer, killer quims in that. And he's like, quims. yes, you are right. This man has no dick. Quips? I'm sure you meant. <laughs> yes, I, I, I did. I, I got, because I got a movie sounds for like too. he's lezzing off a couple. Okay, okay. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Quips. Uh, so, Anina, roll iconic. I agree with you, Ghostbusters. He's amazing in everything, including Lost in Translation, but mm -hmm. it's still, it's still um, Ghostbusters. I, Sean? I, I got to say Ghostbusters as well, but honorable mention, Scrooged. Oh yeah, that's such a good movie. Put a little oh, love my. in your heart. Oh my god, and like they had such a good cast on it too, I mean like they had so many good actors in it, and I mean just, you know, the whole different stages of his, his yeah, career, the corporate one. When he one. shoots the ghost and he just goes, blammo, <laughs> blammo, blammo, blam, blam. Yeah, and the I'm ghost like, looks at and says, don't shoot the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's like, take it easy on the Bacardi. <laughs> I like that. I, I like that a lot. Or the, or the fact that... My honorable mention, but Ghostbusters, yes. Yeah. I have, um, Burhan, I have a very honorable mention that... Caddyshack. You will completely agree with me on, on this. Grand Hog Day. No, I'm talking about another actor, because I thought we were going for... Well, you need to basically tell us your Maori, uh, your Maori iconic role. My Maori is, um, Ghostbusters. Four so for four! When he says... Back off, man. I'm a scientist. Go on, give, us, good too. give us your honourable mention. Yeah, Strange was good, 
But at the end of the day, as an adult, looking at it now, it's like you just took an RV and put shit on the sides. <laughs> I do want to give out an honourable mention to um, it as well for a few other films that he's done. If you haven't checked them out, you I don't know why you haven't fucking checked them out because it's on the list of mine. My... Bill Murray, you bitches. Sorry, exactly. Like he's that. redefined himself and he's reshaped himself a lot. Oh, he's um, never... Rushmore. Rushmore. Great Bill Murray movie. Yes. And Steve Zuso. Rushmore. Steve Zuso. Another great Bill Murray movie. He's so good in that movie. Him with and Puppets. The when he has the feud with the kid. Yep. Sorry. He's done, he's done a lot of amazing things. Um, so guys, check them out. Zombieland's another one that comes to mind. He wasn't oh God, the Puppet main itself. focus of that movie, but he was a part of it. It was such a left field, though, when you see him. Yeah. There was no it, mention, it was no a left, left field with the fact that he um, let someone else wear the Ghostbusters suit, and he <laughs> sat there with the fucking Hoover. Yeah, they're all high and playing fucking Ghostbusters. I would love to get high Bill Murray and play Ghostbusters for the afternoon. It would be such a fucking dream. Then he apologizes when he gets shot. What do you have any regrets? None. Well, Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but God. yeah, Bill Murray, awesome source. Right, Dave, do you want to give your your special oh, shout out? You'll, you'll agree with this. Um, and I just bought his other, which we're not going to talk about, DVD on Monday, but... I think um, greatest depiction of a character ever, Mike, Michael Keaton, Batman. Oh, fucking course. We didn't. Yeah. We forgot Keaton, didn't we? But of course it's Batman. Oh. He's still, to me, in my mind, the greatest Batman ever. I agree. I, I even like when he talked to Alfred and he's talking about, we should make the Batcave more secure. Yeah, this is the guy who let Vicky Vale in there. I'm just doing my work and turn around. Oh, hi, Vicky. The one, the one thing I will, <laughs> one thing I will point out as well, he never had to use a synthesizer for his voice, and he didn't sound like he was yes. on cough medication. Exactly. Yes, thank I'm you. I'm pretty sure he raped his own vocal cords for talking like that. But and he, he and again, when he when he takes Vicky Vale up on the the you know the, the, <laughs> yes. yeah. how much do you weigh? That's brilliant. Absolutely and then also, and also he, he knew the difference between Bruce Wayne Bruce. and Batman. He knew the difference between the two characters, which again, a lot of people don't seem to get the gist of. Mm. I will argue to this day, and I know this podcast is not about that, but I will argue to this day that the greatest Batman movie is Tim Burton's original. Mm -hmm. I have that and the second one on DVD. Um, I got, I got, I got to agree with him as Batman. But honorable mentions to him: Johnny Dangerously, fucking just great, great movie. Rob Mann can quote it along with me word for word. Uh, Joe Piscopo is one of the only good roles he's ever been in. But the other one, he was the only redeeming quality in the fucking RoboCop remake. <laughs> yes. Such a good bad guy. No, Such he was good. terrible. He was being he Steve was Jobs. He was I loved him. I, I got to disagree with you. I, I liked him in that. He was the only redeeming quality of the movie. Like, it wasn't an awful movie, no. But, like, just how he played, like, the, the bottom line bad guy in charge of a company. There was no, like, no premise. You know, he had no substance. His character was badly written. He tried, I, I have to agree, he did try to pull as much as he could out of it. But... I mean, it, look at, compared to the other I ones. Thought, he I shined compared he to everybody right. else. He shined compared to everybody else in that film. Everybody else was... Yeah, but he was polishing a turd, that's why. Yeah. But Johnny Dangerously, oh my god. Johnny Dangerously is like one of his penultimate like comedies of funny Michael Keaton. Just flat out funny Michael Keaton. And I, I go back to that movie from time to time just to watch it. He does quirky so better than anyone. Oh my god. Well, so I mean, ladies... That was like, you know, great. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, let us know what your one, iconic... One, one, one. Shh, up, Dave, shush, cup of shush. One more, one more, ladies one more. and gentlemen... Leave. Brandon Lee as the crow. Oh, let's oh, not even yes. let's not even open that kettle of fish. So, ladies and gentlemen, such a tragic loss. Ladies and gentlemen, below 
leave your comments below on your iconic characters and the, the actors and your iconic characters that they've played. It doesn't necessarily mean characters they were typecast as, but characters that they made their own. Characters that, when you remember that character very fondly, you'll remember that actor. And also leave the comments for Robert Downey Jr. because we're on tie with Robert Downey Jr. So let us know what your moment is for him. And also uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So there you go. We only, it's, it's actually kind of funny that we only tied on two different actors. Uh, with the rest of them we're kind of in solid agreement with. So there you go guys for that. Now let's go to the plugs. Because basically I'm tired and I need my sleep. Because I'm enunciating and pronouncing words wrong. Um, and... Uh, I probably everybody else probably just wants to get some rest. So let's go um, on to that for I'm Mr. Sean Michelin. Where can we find you? I gotta agree about the rest part. I just punched in 120 hours in the last two weeks, 125 two weeks before. You can find me on YouTube at um, youtubecom slash user slash dietless79 d a i a t l e u s seven nine. Same spelling for dietless79 for to find me on Twitter and on Instagram. Facebook, Sean J. Michelin. Um, as well, you can also find me on Instructables. I write articles there from time to time. Um, I, I I don't flout it too much, but I am a big movie buff, and I really did enjoy this evening. Uh, new videos at some point when I find a bloody time in personal life and work life. Oh, You're more than welcome to make a return, my suits. friend. Oh, I, I'm down for another one. I am definitely down for another Untitled Movie Show. It's just finding the time on my weekdays. Weekends are usually a bit more easier for me because I usually always have Sundays off. I want to uh, share a blunt with you, Sean. Oh, blunt man and chronic. Back, you come back to Canada or I get over there, and I'm going to come right to Bristol, and we're going to go out, and we're going to smoke a nice big one, and we're going to go get a kebab, maybe watch a footy game, go get a pint. Oh, Dave's hair while he vomits. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to get... <laughs> Gotta hold can, that Keanu hold Reeves hair. hair. And that's somebody we didn't up. talk about was Keanu Reeves. We don't need to. We don't need to talk about Keanu oh, Reeves. Fuck! We missed the Matrix. Well, if oh. we do it, if we do a part two, which we're def most definitely going yeah. to, we will talk about Keanu Reeves. And Nina. Are you talking about John Wick? <laughs> Me. By the way, that's Me. been greenlit for a second movie. So Nina. Really? Yep. You wow. can find me on uh, Facebook and Twitter. I'm Anina Kaski, A double N I N A K A S K I. And now I also have a website up and running, which is aninakaski.com. Does it? Does it like talk about the ten different reasons why you think boobs are annoying? <laughs> no, that 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 is not on my professional acting website. It so should. You get. In case I do get typecast as the boob woman. You'll probably get like a ton of work from it. You'll be like, I'm a millionaire, but I'm kind of annoyed because I've been typecast as the boob woman. My stage name is Chessie LaRue. <laughs> yeah, that would yeah, be quite breast, impressive boob, since I don't, breast don't have a massive breast. So. Boob sounds like a saggy bag full of... It'll, it'll be the point where they'll, you'll just get prosthetics because they'll just like... <laughs> Lace them overwards, and you'll be like, "Why are my boobs need to be bigger?" Well, you're the boob woman, so we need to give you more substance. <laughs> I might make who knows. I'm gonna make YouTube videos, so uh, if if I never don't have inspiration, who knows? I might make that YouTube video. But... Top ten videos why boobs are annoying. At least that happens. I'm pretty sure that'll get views. It would get me views, but uh, not sorry, that was really type, crap. But... I do apologize. You talk about YouTube now, you porn. Yeah, yeah, or Pornhub, Dave. Like, yeah, I went to drama school for three years and stage school for nine years to play with my tits. <laughs> that, we should have that as a quotable. I went for drama school for three oh, years and stage you. school for nine years to play with my tits. And in exactly. a casket. I got a bloody bachelor of fine arts, so I'm known for making my memories. What's up, bitches? <laughs> This is Anita giving a speech to kids at a secondary school. Why would she get into acting? She gives them that quote and they're all like standing up applauding her. No, no, yeah. It's your... No it... plays with their tits better than me. With yeah. more feeling. Once more, we feel... I, I go method on those bad boys. Yeah. <laughs> she calls one Daniel Day-Lewis and she calls the other one Russell Crowe. Oh my god. Where have we <laughs> This show has devolved... Yeah, you know the funny thing is, ladies and gentlemen, this show is devolved, and I am not responsible for this. Miguel's fault. This is. Miguel, we miss you, buddy. We do. We miss you. Yeah, we do. We miss um, you, but it's your fault. 
Dave, where are you? Where where can we find you? Apart from the fact that you're, you know, when you're not getting horrendously drunk and commenting on boobs. Yeah, yeah when you're not in the Tesco alcohol section. Pretty much. <laughs> um, dare I, dare I go, Dan? No. <laughs> I want to go, Dan. No. <laughs> you're such a wanker. Yes, I am. Tough shit, sugar tits. No. You can find me at the end of the, the, the end. Of Lord Wolf host, people. Yay! Uh, and also find out a collaborative project. Me and Dave are going to be doing something um, which I'm, I'm going to release. Drunk. Which I'm going to release on my YouTube channel. Defense, I'm going to release it. Over. I'm going to release this on my YouTube channel tomorrow. A very special, a very special video for Dave Wade. So now, I can make... now uh, going on from that, guys. You find me on youtube.com forward slash the nerd genius. If you want to find my content, I did the AMA vlog from Blackpool. A lot of people like it. I mean, I'm going to be doing another one. Uh, I also do the Who's That Pokemon series just because I like to take the piss out of people. Uh, if you've got a YouTuber that you want to recommend, all you got to do is just leave a comment and say who you want to basically go for that. I got gameplay every Saturday, 8 p.m. on this very network, the Retro Unlimited Network as well. Uh, until we resolve these issues with YouTube and also my internet straddling itself, make sure that you guys uh, tune in uh, as it's all going to be like pre-recorded. I got gameplay this week. It's going to be something really cool, which is the uh, basically games that were started on Kickstarter. So make sure that you check that out. Talk about like the indie development because I'm a big fan of indie development. Also, go to youtube.com retro and limb and check out all my interviews from Play Blackpool. Tons of interviews that I had with several different guests, including Jeff Minter, the Oliver Twins, uh, to name a few. I talked to a few indie devs as well, including another guy by the name of Michael as well, who uh, talks about his new game, which I'm excited for. Check all those out and uh, go to retro and limb live, youtube.com retro and limb live. And check out a directed panel. I directed this panel. I spoke on this panel. And um, I hosted, helped host this panel alongside Harry Yak. Which is the Retro Alim 42 panel. Check all those videos out guys. Follow me on Twitter. Twitter.com. Michael Burhan. Trying to get to 500 um, like followers at the moment. Because for some reason I managed to lose 4 followers within a day. So check that out there. And as always. Uh, basically. Uh, also iTunes uh, what I need you to do if you go to I got gameplay on iTunes iTunes.com for slash I got gameplay leave a review for us tell us what you're you know what's going on than that um, and what you think of the show that would be great for you guys as well Burhan and the boys tomorrow myself and Dave Wade hopefully he'll be Not less intox hopefully he'll be less intoxicated we'll be talking Doctor Who with Miguel Leon so uh, make sure that you check that out because Miguel I know on today he'll be on tomorrow for Burhan and the boy uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. This is a Nina Kasky. This, what, am, am I Nina Kasky now? Oh, no, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I wish... You got great tits. Yeah, that message. Yeah, I'll be like, I'm hmm. Suddenly I'm turned on by Benedict Cumberbatch. I don't know why. Um, so, <laughs> this is Michael Burhan for uh, Miss Nina Kasky, for Saul Michelin, for Mr. Dave Wade, a.k.a. Lawn Boys Post 1975, saying that we will see you guys at the movies. Get away, zit face. Where we're going, we won't need roads.